Hi guys. Have you ever had to wait for something? Perhaps a doctor's appointment or a dentist? Or perhaps you've been standing at a bus stop or on the platform at a train station waiting for a train or a bus? Or perhaps you've had to wait for something that you've ordered to come and arrive in the post at the moment because we're not going out to the shops as much. We're ordering a lot of things online and we're having to wait for the postman to come. Or perhaps if you've got a younger brother or sister, you even remember what it's like waiting for a baby to arrive. If you can remember when your mum was pregnant with your brother or sister, you might remember what that was like. And that takes ages for them to arrive. Advent is a period of waiting. And the word Advent literally means coming or arrival. So it's the period of waiting for something to arrive. Or in this case, not something, not like a parcel from the postman, but someone. And at Advent, we are awaiting for the arrival of baby Jesus at Christmas. Now, nowadays, we have so many different ways that we can pass the time of waiting. We have lots of different Advent calendars and we have Advent candles, that some of you might know about. Um, behind me, you can see my family, one of my family's advent calendars. Um, but we have all sorts nowadays, don't we? We have chocolate ones. We have ones with the little windows that you open and then it's got pictures behind them. Um, I've heard of people who have ones that even that have little gifts in them. Sometimes they're on a theme. Maybe you get little stickers or maybe even I've seen Lego ones and you all get to build up a Lego set. There are so many creative different advent calendars. Or you might have one a bit like this where this one, we pull out different parts of the nativity scene. And, and as the weeks go on, we cr as the days go on, we create the nativity scene on our advent calendar. Um, and that's great. It's fantastic. However, advent, the period of waiting for advent for Christmas, should be about more than just passing the time. Because we're waiting for the arrival of someone, not something. When we're waiting at the bus stop or at the dentist, there's probably not much we can do to get ready. We might have had to brush our teeth before we go to the wait, but once we're in the waiting room, we just have to wait. And maybe we read a book or a magazine to pass the time. Um, but other things we're waiting for, we need to do some preparation. We need to do some getting ready, okay? So if we had a baby on the way, if our mom, if any of your mums are pregnant right now and have a baby in their tummy, you'll know that you need to get things ready. You need to get nappies ready for the baby. You need to maybe get a crib or a bed ready for the baby to sleep in and um, probably buy some warm clothes for them to wear once they're born. Um, so there's lots to do if you're getting ready for a baby. But perhaps babies are not something you particularly used to do or you don't have babies in your family. Um, but perhaps you have had visitors come to stay. And if you're expecting visitors to arrive, maybe you have to buy extra food from the shop to make sure you've got enough when they come round. Or you have to get a spare room ready and put the new bedding on for, for the guests to stay in. And there's lots to do to get ready. And Christmas is a bit more like that because there's lots we can be doing. Maybe some of you have put up a Christmas tree already. Or maybe you've put up some other decorations Perhaps you've been to the shops and bought some presents or, like we mentioned earlier, ordered them online. And maybe you've even helped to wrap a few. Maybe you've written some cards to your friends at school or to people, relatives who live far away and you're not going to get to see them. So maybe you've sent those off in the post already. There are all sorts of things we do to get ready. But again, these things are not what I want you to think about today in getting ready. OK. Mums and dads might be thinking about getting some special food in and we might be thinking about the decorations if we haven't already done them. But Christmas is about so much more than presents, cards, decorations and food. It's all about Jesus. And that first Christmas, all those years ago, lots of people were waiting for Jesus' arrival. Obviously, there was his immediate family, Mary, his mum, who was waiting for this baby to arrive. She'd had a visit from Angel Gabriel and she that this baby was going to be born was going to be a very special baby and she would have had lots to do to get ready and then later as well Joseph the, the earthly dad of Jesus um, he actually had another visit from an angel because 
for him, it must have been very strange because Mary was pregnant, but it wasn't his baby. And that must have been really hard. But God was good to him because he sent an angel to explain that it was OK. It was going to be God's child that Mary had inside her and that it was OK still to marry her. But they would have had to do lots of things to get ready because, as we know, they had to go on a long journey to Bethlehem, which wasn't where they really lived. They had to go and probably a little bit unexpectedly just before the baby was born to make that long journey. They would have had lots of things to get ready. But it wasn't just them that knew that Jesus was going to be born. Because, you see, Jesus was such a special baby. His birth was predicted way, 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 way before it actually happened. Hundreds of years before it happened. If we look at the Old Testament, in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a name which means God with us. So these verses that were written hundreds of years before Jesus was born were talking about Jesus. And people at that time who had read the, their part of the Bible that they had there in the Old Testament would have known that something like this was going to happen and they were waiting for it to happen. Also in Micah, chapter 5 verse 2 he even talked about where Jesus would be born it says but you Bethlehem Ephrathah though you are small among the clans of Judah out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel whose origins are from of old from ancient times so people even knew where he was going to be born even though that was written hundreds of years before it actually happened and there were two other people you can read about them in Luke chapter 2. These were two people who were waiting for Jesus' birth, but who weren't his immediate family. Their names were Simeon and Anna. Now, Simeon and Anna were both quite old, but they, it says in the Bible that they were described as devout, which is a funny word, but it means that they were really strongly committed to their faith. It means that they took it really seriously and they did lots of things, that they, everything that they could really, to show their faith. They read the Bible a lot. Now, they didn't have the Bible like we had. They had what we call the scriptures. The Old Testament part of the Bible was their Bible then. And they read them and they would have known about these verses from the Old Testament. So they were waiting for Jesus to be born. They didn't necessarily know his name, but they knew a special baby was going to come. And Anna even lived in the temple. When her husband had died and she was a widow, she spent the rest of her life living in temple worshipping God and they were rewarded by getting to see baby Jesus when his mum and dad took him to the temple as was the custom to do they got to see him so they knew that God's promises had come true that Jesus had been born before they died even though they were quite old they got to see that which is great and then there were other people like the wise men they also studied they studied like the stars and they studied and knew that a special baby was going to be born and they did things to get ready too. They also went on a really long journey following the star we know about to try and find where this baby was but they also prepared by buying special gifts and they didn't buy just any old gifts. They bought gifts that would really mean something and um, tell us something about who Jesus was. So they bought gold which showed that he was a king, that he was incredibly important and they talks about his majesty they also bought frankincense. Now, frankincense is a funny thing because we don't really have it now, but it's a kind of smelly thing that they used to burn in the temples um, and only the priests were allowed to burn it. And it was to draw God's presence towards them. And so the reason the wise men bought frankincense was to show that Jesus would be a priest. And the final gift of myrrh. Now, myrrh was also a funny thing. It was a kind of ointment they used. Um, when they were burying people to make the dead body smell better. So it's a bit of a strange gift to buy for a baby. But again, the wise men had thought about that and it was pointing forwards towards Jesus' death and the way that he would die as a sacrifice for us. So the very reason that he came. Um, but more than that, these gifts were also really precious. They were worth a lot of money. And we know that Mary and Joseph didn't have much money. Um, they had to stay in a stable 
when Jesus was born. So actually they could have been sold to help provide for baby Jesus as he grew up into a child. So they were really, really precious gifts. So we can learn from these people. What can we do this year in the days that are left leading up to Christmas? As we open our advent calendar, that's fine. And maybe you've got a chocolate one and you enjoy your chocolates. That's all great. But I also want you to take time to remember the reason that we celebrate Christmas and get our hearts ready. And the way that we can do that is that we can read the Christmas story. Or if you've read it lots of times, reread the Christmas story and see if you can learn a little bit more about some of maybe those unusual characters like Anna and Simeon that maybe you don't know much about. And remember why it was that Jesus came, that it's not just that he was born as a baby but what he would go on to do eventually as an adult when he died for us so that we could be with God again in heaven when we die, and which is such an amazing gift, and that's why Christmas is such an amazing time. So I'm going to pray for us now. Heavenly Father, help us to remember what is important to do as we get ready for Christmas this year. Help us to remember you and why you came. Amen. It's been great to be with you again. Um, don't forget that the Christmas trail starts today. So you can go out and find those QR codes um, and scan them and watch the videos. And they will also tell you a little bit more about Christmas. Have fun um, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.